Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Mishpoka. Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda Ben Shomer. Today, I'm going to be talking about uh, sin and mental illness. First of all, we need to define what sin is. Uh, according to 1 John 3, 4, sin is a breaking or a transgression of the Torah, plain and simple. So when we break Torah or disobey Torah, we are sinning. In the most elementary of cases, sin can separate us from an intimate and personal relationship with the Creator. And we see this clearly uh, all the way in the Genesis account of the fall uh, where Adam and Eve sinned. Now in the most extreme cases, sin can open the door to demonic possession. And we see this with Judas Iscariot. When he sinned and betrayed uh, Moshiach, it said that Hasatan entered him. Uh, we see that when uh, King Saul sinned, that an evil spirit from, from, uh, that was sent by God, was sent by Elohim, came to torment Saul. Um, so uh, also we see that uh, uh, Legion, who, um, who lived a sinful lifestyle and was continually in sin, eventually became possessed by so many demons that he went by the name Legion. Um, and then you, know, you also see where the... Uh, the boy, um, the man who had the demon-possessed son, uh, he was demon-possessed and it caused epilep epileptic type seizures where it says that he constantly, you know, the demon is trying to throw him into the fire. So let me make, let me read from what I've written down here to make things a little bit more clear, um, make them congeal a little bit better for the listeners. As well as mental illness, some may feel that demon possession and mental illness is the same and in some cases can overlap and be one in the same. But I believe, however, that they can also be separate. Not all mental illness um, is a case of demon possession, nor is all demon-possessed people uh, have mental illness. A possible case of mental illness and demon possession might be seen, in, as I just said, in the story of Legion, and possibly King Saul. So occasionally, a demon possession can mask, it, mask itself and manifest itself as a physical malady. Um, just as I gave the example of the man who had the demon possessed son who brought him to Yeshua. And uh, so these are some classic accounts in the Tanakh which lends to the argument that sin can lead to mental illness as the account of King Saul and King Nebuchadnezzar. We know uh, that uh, King Saul had a history of disobeying God and as a result of disobeying God, he seen somebody who was living a holy life and was getting fame and recognition because of his holy life and character. He was able to, def to defeat giants. Um, the women started singing, Saul has slain his thousands and, and, and David his tens of thousands. And therefore jealousy uh, began to take root in, in King Saul's heart. And uh, he conspired to kill not only David, but even tried to attempt to kill his own son, Jonathan. So this, this sin, this disobedience, caused him to know that the kingdom would be ripped from his hands. He saw this other guy who said, man, he's a perfect candidate to, to take this kingdom from me, as has been told. So uh, Saul was, was, was constantly not only jealous, but he was constantly paranoid, always looking over his shoulder, waiting for the other shoe to drop, waiting for the kingdom to be ripped out of his hands. He was miserable. Um, and so this is because of sin. Lust of the eyes and the pride of life, as we read in the Brit Kadesha, and also in, in uh, the book of Yaakov, James, says when lust has conceived, it brings forth sin, and when sin is finished, it brings forth death. And we see in the case of King Nebuchadnezzar, we read that uh, because of his sin and because of the sin of um, putting his self in the place of God, in other words, giving himself credit for what God has done, this caused him to fall into a mental illness where he was basically insane and lived like an animal for approximately a year, where his hair grew like feathers and his nails as long as bird's talons, as, as it says in the Tanakh. So we know that sin leads to, uh, sin leads to knowingly uh, knowing disobedience. So sin, such sin leads to willful uh, disobedience. You know you're in sin. You know you're doing wrong. And thus paranoia of divine punishment or judgment uh, overtakes a person. For what is the price of sin? Romans 6.23 says, For the wages, or the payment of sin, the price of sin, is death. But the gift of, of Elohim is eternal life through Mashiach Yeshua, our Adonai. Um, let me read to you uh, Proverb, uh, Proverbs chapter 3. 
Proverbs chapter 3, verse 21, starting at verse 21, rather. And it says, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes, and keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul, and grace to thy neck. They sh uh, then shalt thou walk in the way safely, and thou foot should not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. So if you're walking in Torah, walking in righteousness, walking in disobedience, you're not going to have any reason for paranoia or fear of repercussions of judgment or sin, some sin coming back to haunt you. Remember what number says, be sure your sin will find you out. And you don't have to worry about something coming back to bite you in the tuchus. Going on here, it says, be not afraid of sudden fear neither of desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. So if, you, if you're not in sin and you're living by the Torah and living righteous, you don't have to keep looking over your shoulder all the time, waiting for divine judgment for happen, to happen or somebody uh, coming to get you back. And here's the key verse, the linchpin. Um, Proverbs 28 verse 1. It says, The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. People who are living in willful and knowing sin are constantly living in fear and paranoia and looking behind them, waiting for somebody get to get them, waiting for a sin to be uncovered or discovered and for their cover to be blown, for their secret sin to be found out. They're waiting for uh, the, the, the other shoe to drop and for divine judgment to fall because they know that they're in sin and they're unrepentant. The wicked, in other words, the lawless, the Torahlessness, the people that do not keep Torah or live by Torah walk in the footsteps of Yeshua, our Messiah, by walking and following the Torah. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. You know, I, I, it, I, it comes to mind. There are several spiritual leaders that I know, not only because they've been in the public eye and because they've uh, had fame and recognition worldwide, but I even know on a personal level some spiritual leaders that I personally know who have, who have lived a lifestyle of secret sin, of covering their past and of covering their tracks. And this constant fear of being discovered, being found out, constantly looking over their shoulder for somebody to get them for something that they've done. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. You know, Hasatan loves to play mind games with those who are wicked and Torahless. And Elohim allows this to happen because this is just a result, a consequence of willful sin. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. So can sin lead to a mental breakdown, a mental collapse, a nervous breakdown? You bet it can. You bet it could, and it does, and I've seen it happen. And I've seen people who've been so miserable because they will not confess and repent of their sin that they're always be, being afraid of being discovered and found out that it leads them to paranoia and fear and, 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 and the lashing out at others and, and taking things the wrong way. And they're losing, they're losing congregants, they're losing friends, they're losing loved ones, and they're, bring, they're, they're putting themselves in a self-built cell, a self-built cage of sin. And they're driving themselves mad. They're driving themselves bonkers with this unconfessed sin. And, and it's like the world is crumbling and falling, uh, falling around them. So, in, in, but, but mind you, this is actually sort of a blessing in disguise. Because if somebody comes to the end of the rope, somebody hits rock bottom, and they have nowhere else to look but up, and when they look up, they see the bottom of the barrel, and they've fallen so low, they have no other choice but to either die in that state, do away with themselves as Judas did, or to cry out and confess as Nebuchadnezzar did and recognize the Elohim and, and confess their sin and be restored and recover from this mental illness and this mental malady. You know, Elohim allows someone to be handed over to Hasatan for the destruction of their soul because when they come to nothing and they're totally desolate and they have nothing left and no one left around him the only thing they can do is either die or confess so the ultimate goal of even the punishment of sin of even God allowing someone to, to have wickedness pursue them and be taken in their sin is so that the person will repent 
and confess their sin and be laid raw, be laid open, be laid naked and bare so that it will all come clean. Confession is good for the soul, as they say. You know, and once all that is exposed and all that's off their chest, they no longer have to look over their shoulder. They no longer have to hide. They can be free and delivered from their past and from their sin and be forgiven not only by God but by other people. So can sin lead to mental illness? Most definitely. I wouldn't be surprised if a vast majority of people that are in mental institutions is because of some hidden and secret sin or fault. Um, and, and, you know, equally, I believe that there's some people that are in mental institutions who are only there because they are demon-possessed. Because they have sinned and opened a doorway for Hasatan or his legions to come in and to manifest themselves as mental illness. You know, so, uh, this has just been on my heart and my mind lately. Uh, so I just pray that this video is taken in the right spirit and the right frame of mind. I pray that you've learned something new, uh, been, been encouraged and edified by it. Maybe some questions you've had about sin, about mental illness and demon possession has been answered to some degree. I know this is not an exhaustive video of those things, but this is just kind of touching on just a few small points. So thanks for watching. Shalom and Shavuotov. Bye-bye.